to the Board of Regents, headed by the Chad Chairperson, J. Prospero de Vera III, to the UP administration officials, headed by our UP President, Danilo L. Concepcion, to the Vice Presidents of the UP system and the Chancellors from other constituent universities, to the Chancellor, Lyra Annie Morao, and the UP Mindanao officials and personnel, faculty, parents, alumni, guests, and fellow graduates. Good morning. On behalf of all the graduating students, I would like to thank everyone who has kept the University of the Philippines Mindanao and its students steadfast and resilient through the past years. To the central administration, thank you for making the necessary decisions for the well-being of the students and for your vision for the future of the university. To the graduation committee, thank you for your hard work which has made this day possible. We can finally march up this stage face to face after many years of remote learning. To the faculty and staff of each college, thank you for being the pillars that support this university. Your dedication to your work inspires us to be the best that we can be, even on days when we don't feel like it. Thank you for answering our emails, conducting online classes, and encouraging us to learn as much as we can, despite the new mode of learning. To the maintenance and security personnel, thank you for taking care of the campus and keeping watch over it, especially during the moments when there was nobody else here. To our friends and loved ones, thank you for supporting us in every way you can. There were days when we almost gave up, but you never stopped believing in us. Last but not the least, to our parents, guardians, and members of our perceived family, thank you for your sacrifice, encouragement, and love. You give us the strength to continue with our journey. Four years ago, I was standing here today, delivering a speech for the 2018 UP Mindanao Convocation. Back then, I was wide-eyed and hopeful for what this college would bring. When the UPCAT results were released in 2018, there were a total of 82,854 takers, but only 15.57% passed, with another 3.34%, which were pending cases and deep was. We are a part of that percentage. Tasabihin na mga tao, Wow! Ang galing! A scholar ng bayan! Kahit saan man tayo mapunta, may tatak UP nga and may tatak UP pride. All of us have the IQ to be here. And if you doubt that fact, then just look at the stats. But IQ is never enough, not in UP and not in the real world, because our mind can only go so far without our hearts. Helen Keller, one of my inspirations ever since I was a child, was an American author who lost her sight and hearing at only 19 months. Because of this, she couldn't speak until the age of nine years old. She wouldn't have been able to speak at all if it wasn't for her teacher, Anne Sullivan, a 20-year-old from the Perkins Institution for the Blind. I remember watching the movie about Helen Keller entitled The Miracle Worker, and I was in awe of how her teacher, Anne Sullivan, never gave up on her. Anne taught her the alphabet through finger spelling. And eventually, Helen Keller increased her vocabulary, learned to read Braille, and eventually speak. From then on, she rose to become a disability rights advocate, renowned author, and political activist. In one of her speeches, she said, the, the best and most beautiful things in the world cannot be seen or even touched. They must be felt with the heart. Because of the kindness, patience, and love of the people around her, Helen Keller reached her full potential. Just like her, we are graduating today because of the firm foundations our teachers, parents, and friends gave us. Through our hearts, we can also extend that same benevolence to others, especially those in need. Tabi nga ng UP, 
utak at puso. I think one of the major events in our lives that made us realize that our minds are not always enough was when COVID-19 pandemic hit. Suddenly, we were pulled out of our campus lives, which was an escape from the various responsibilities we had at home. All of a sudden, there were bigger problems than the next math quiz or GE paper. There were even some of us who had to work multiple jobs to pay for the education and to support their family. We were also faced with the reality of how fleeting lives are and the importance of strong relationships. Most of all, we battled with our own minds because of mental health problems caused by anxiety and lack of human interaction. Before the pandemic, I was already facing battles on my own. I had many responsibilities to my family, to the organizations I joined, and to the school. Everything was getting overwhelming for me, and honestly, I wished for time to stop. Then, the pandemic happened. To be completely honest, the first week was filled with moments of relief because I can finally get enough sleep. Little did I know that the pandemic was going to last two years. And in those two years, we battled with new challenges that online classes would bring. Personally, there were days where I was asking myself, Nag-aaral pa ba ako? Relevant pa ba ang ginagawa ko sa school? There were so many days of self-doubt and second-guessing the state of our lives. But we never gave up. None of us did. The university did not give up on us and transitioned to remote learning. We students did not give up on each other, and we cheered each other on. Our parents and guardians sacrificed for us and did everything they could to support us. And even if some of our batchmates are not here to graduate with us, the mere fact that everyone, including those watching in the live stream, are still standing and battling the circumstances of life is something that we should be proud of. With that, I would like to give this moment for everyone to clap their hands for each other and for themselves. <laughs> Woo! Guys, we survived! <laughs> and now that I finished college, I feel conflicted. On one hand, I am so happy that college is finally over. Yay! Makahawa na jud ko gyupi. But I also feel myself wanting to go back again instead of facing the real world. Graduating from college doesn't make our problems suddenly disappear. However, graduating is a sign that a stage in our life is now finished and we are ready to move on to the next part of it. But as I was writing this speech, I find myself questioning, am I ready? Are we ready? Some of us may feel that they are, but some of us may feel that they aren't. For me, I feel like I'm not. And I find myself panicking sometimes about what my future holds. My mind is once again jumping to conclusions and my heart is beating so fast that sometimes I feel like I cannot breathe. But when this happens, I ground myself in the present and remember the lessons that I've learned throughout my journey. These lessons combine both the heart and mind to form character. And in moments of deep thought and self-reflection, I remember four major lessons that I can hold on to. Number one, you are not alone. Well, we are never truly alone on this campus, as we have heard in the many horror stories. But in all seriousness, we must realize that many people went on this journey with us. I want you to look around you and see the faces of your classmates and fellow graduates. These were our companions through all the hardship, the people who helped us survive our journey through UP and the pandemic. For me, my people were my best friends in college, and ang name ng aming group ay Kalandian. Because it all started with the brewing romance from one of our friends. Maybe nakita nyo kanina, Char? <laughs> when we all meet each other, I hope remember our friends and our cheesy group names. Hopefully, we can look back fondly at all these memories we have made. 
Hopefully, we can reminisce about the difficulty of exams and online classes. Remember how fun the acquaintance parties were? And laugh at all the drama from university-wide events, such as cheer dance and intramurals. I also want all of us to remember the people who aided us to be here today, the university faculty and staff, our parents, guardians, and families. These people work hard to motivate us and encourage us to push through all the challenges, especially during the pandemic. Most of all, we shouldn't forget about the Lord God Almighty who has carried us through all the difficult times. Number two, character is more important than grades or achievements. When I found out I was summa cum laude, I was very happy. But the adrenaline rush of knowing that we achieved something will only last a few seconds or a few minutes or maybe a few hours and a few days, and then it fades away. Once it fades, we realize that we are still the same person as we were a few seconds ago. And who that person is, who we are, is defined more by our character and the values that we have carried with us through our journey. Of course, when we apply for a job or grad school, these achievements will look good on our resume. However, the people that we will encounter will remember our kindness, compassion, and generosity. Discipline and integrity will drive us when things get hard. Humility will remind us that dreams can be as simple as aspiring to create a loving family or finally reach a place of peace and contentment. And gratefulness will help us see the beauty in days of languishing when we feel like we are just floating around in meaningless existence. Number three. Use every opportunity to find yourself. Throughout our lives, many people will try to tell us who we are. They will tell us what choices to make or who we should aspire to be. On the other hand, many people will also say, just be yourself. But many of us still don't have any idea who or what the self is. As we encounter different people and circumstances, we will be putting our principles to the test. By doing so, we can discover who we are in moments of weakness or strength, hardship or comfort, or failure and triumph. Yet, let us treat ourselves with respect and patience. Even if we do not live up to our expectations or the expectations of others, we, may we remind ourselves that we are a work in progress and each of us has the potential to become a better person. Number four. Last na, friends. <laughs> Take one step at a time. Who among those here has tried hiking? Can I see some hands? Can you try ng hiking? Okay. So, recently I have been very fond of hiking. And I can see a few people in the crowd na nabudol ko to go on hikes with me. Hiking can be very relaxing and peaceful but sometimes it can also be very hard, especially when it rains and the ground becomes very slippery. There will be many times where you will slip and fall. But one thing is for sure, no matter what kind of trail it is, you only have to take one step at a time and you will eventually reach your destination. Today, we have reached the destination that we have worked so hard for ever since we started our academic journeys. Now, we must take another step forward to reach our personal goals and find our purpose, no matter how simple or extravagant they may be. All of us were standing here in this atrium four years ago, full of hope and excitement for what college will bring. Those four years have already passed, and we are standing here once again, still filled with hope and excitement for what the next stage of our lives will be. Truly, the future is uncertain, and some of us might never feel like we are ready. But the lessons we learned, the relationships that we made, and the growth that we experienced throughout those years are very real. Today, we can rest in the certainty that we will be carrying them with us as we embark on our journey through the real world. Most of all, 
Huwag natin kalimutan ang isa sa mga moto ng UP, utak at puso. Ito ang pangako natin sa ating sarili at sa ating mga kababayan na ating pagsisilbihan ng ating bansa at ang kanyang mamamayan. With that, I would like to end with a verse from Philippians 4, 6-7. A verse that my mom always says to me whenever I start panicking. It reads, Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, my prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God, and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. As my mother utters these words, I feel my mind going back to the present and my heart calming down. Through faith, there is certainty in the uncertain. Once again, congratulations to all of us and let us look forward to years of selfless service and boundless growth in our lives. Thank you and have a pleasant day ahead.